Hey, yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy Tenyon Scene 1, and again, as usual, I'm quite late. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm always late, man. But, uh, yeah, um, what's up, everyone? God, this is awkward. Anyways, guys, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been quite late, and it's, it's almost, um, yeah, I'm just gonna say that happy Ramadan to all my brothers, uh, Muslim brothers and sisters out there, even though it's almost the end of Ramadan. I don't know. It might be the end of Ramadan, but the end by by the time I upload this video, because like it's it's like 23rd of June right now. I don't know. Oh well. So, anyways, um, today, uh, you know, we're gonna actually get started with the Photon networking series. Now, a lot of people have been struggling with networking, especially with Photon, because it has it doesn't have a lot of you know. Good documentation, good tutorials, I suppose. It has a, an amazing documentation, actually. But, uh, you know, just people like me who are not willing to read that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite lazy myself, but yeah, true. Uh, but yeah, no blame on you guys. <laughs> Don't see me for this. But anyhow, uh, so we're going to get started with that. And just for the sake of uh, a lot of things, I suppose, I am I, I will be basically skipping uh, on, on certain things. Just to keep this video short, or try to keep this video short, because even though, no matter how hard I try, just, uh, in the end, it doesn't, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started with it. So, I have this basic scene set up here, alright, uh, and oops, <laughs> okay, great. So, what I've done here is I've basically gone to the uh, Azure store, and I've searched for Photon Unity Networking, and just imported that, alright. Uh, make sure you're logged in for this to actually work, obviously. And then what I've done is, after importing, I've created a custom folder. And I've drag and drop all the three folders which uh, Photon Unit Network comes with. And just drag and drop it into the custom folder, right? Just, uh, to, just to keep all the third-party uh, stuff separate from, from, from the, the standard assets and, and whatnot, right? I've also imported the standard assets. A lot of people have been struggling with uh, standard assets especially. Uh, I don't know why, but... Uh, basically, they can't find standard assets uh, under import package standard assets. Obviously, Unity... Uh, if you install Unity uh, through its installer, you have the option to install standard assets. You can do that. If you have not done that, what you can do is you can go to uh, unity3d.com, uh, click on uh, Get Unity, and try Personal. And then what you can do is you can scroll down until you find older versions of Unity, right? And then there you, you, you're like are presented with all, with all the uh, versions of Unity basically. So in my case, I'm using Unity 5.6. So what I can do is I can go to download and I can scroll down until I find standard assets. And it's going to it's gonna download like an installer for that. And uh, after you're done installing those standard assets, uh, you can basically, uh, you can restart Unity and you'll have those, uh, you'll have this, this option under, uh, my bad, uh, you'll have this option here, right? Okay, so uh, I've only imported the first person, so all the folders, uh, just not third person and roller ball folder, just, uh, yeah, I've only imported the first person character. So if I go ahead and I try playing the game, I'll basically have uh, uh, just, just a character can move around, right? Nothing, nothing special, all right? So don't panic, people. It's, it's pretty basic. Uh, pretty sure I have the script. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I created the script beforehand. I'll probably delete right now just so we can, you know, restart with it, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, what we have here now basically is, uh, is, is, a, is, is a scene, I suppose, right? Oh, and I forgot. Um, okay, I think I'm done with the introductions, right? Uh, before before I actually uh, get started, uh, jump to the intro. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say that this tutorial is for beginners to intermediate users of Unity. So I'm not going to explain every single thing I'm, I'm gonna try to explain things for beginners as well but i'm gonna be i'm gonna have sort of a medium pace so yeah it's it's not for extreme beginners uh for for basic beginners to intermediate users all right so uh bear that in mind because i've been receiving complaints of for, for like you know regarding that i'm going too fast i'm sorry about that and i've been receiving compl complaints about uh the videos being too long as well and i'm trying to keep them short all right trust me i'm trying all right i, j I just can't i'm too much of a talkative person god damn it but uh, yeah, so anyways guys, um, without any further ado, let's get started. Oh, here comes the intro. <laughs> Hey 
All right, so uh, basically uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, what we're going to do now, I'm sorry, you, you should just have like an empty scene, all right? That that even system thing, you shouldn't be there, right, by default. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scripts folder and I want to just right click and say create uh, C sharp script and I'm going to call this photon network manager. All right, make sure you have photon in there. And also a couple things I forgot to uh, explain. When you import photon unity networking, it prompts you with something which says, you know, enter photon, uh, enter app ID, all right? So, you know, you, you can skip that. If you skip that, it basically comes up and it shows you this this thing that it created, this asset file, and it should be like this by default, all right? So what you should do is you should go ahead and set it to photon cloud, and you should add your app ID here. Now, how do you get your app ID? You go and you click on uh, cloud dashboard login. So if I go ahead and I just open this up, as you can see, it, it should prompt you here. You should create a Photon uh, login, you know, account and stuff, and you can create a new app from right there. All right. So create a new app, and uh, you can just select whatever you want. In this case, I believe it's uh, Photon Pun. Uh, yeah, and we can just name it anything, like anything, and uh, anything, and just just create. All right. I the description isn't necessary, so yeah. So you can just copy this, if you click on here, just copy that, paste that, uh, and that's that, right? So you can just UDP is apparently a better transfer protocol, so let's, uh, yeah, that's it, yeah? Uh, yeah, and yeah, sure. Also, uh, don't don't forget to save your scene, uh, of course. Uh, right, so let's go ahead and let's um, get right on with it and uh, open up our script then. All right, so now we're inside of the script. Now in this tutorial, I'll, I'll also, uh, uh, we won't be going too much into detail regarding networking, uh, just just how to create a basic room, um, like not a browser or a server browser or something, just, uh, just a room, basically. Uh, just a single room where everyone can just hop in and, and join. And I've probably forgotten a lot of things regarding Photon, but I hope not. So yeah, so the first thing you might notice is, well, there's nothing different, <laughs> so. You might notice that you can, you know, by default, Unity inherits from mono behavior. You you now have something called photon dot mono behavior, which is uh, which basically adds this new property. That's it, uh, which is uh, photon view. Uh, this is like, you know, Unity has this component called network view. If you search for that, uh, now there's another thing called photon view. All right, so it's basically the same thing as Unity, which is uh, relatively similar to Unity's networking. However, this this uh, not not Unity 5's networking, by the way. Uh, the older uh, legacy networking system, which I believe uses something different. I don't know, but anyways, so <clears throat> so basically, what we, we want to use is we want to use photon uh, pun behavior, which uh, also supports certain callbacks, which uh, uh, you know photon calls and whatnot. I, I suppose it's not really required, but maybe for the sake of future purposes, we might want to use this. All right, we can basically use uh, mono behavior or photon dot mono behavior as well. But yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, just something I, I I'm a bit you know used to is I just name my functions private. You don't really have to do that. I think I've been doing that for quite a while actually. Uh, and yeah, it's quite late yet again. Damn it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, actually start off with uh, with connecting to Photon server, right? So we have our app ID. We have everything set up. What we want to do is we want to connect to the server itself. Now, how does this work? Well, we say Photon Network, we access the network, uh, Photon's networking system, basically all the, the library and stuff, I guess you can say. And we just type in connect, oh my god, connect using settings, right? Connect using settings, what this does is basically it connects to the server using all the, the settings defined, obviously. So what we can do here, what we can put in here is we can go ahead and we can put the game version as it says. Uh, now this could this this could be used to uh, you can say differ uh, between certain game versions. For example, you have you're creating a game, you have a 0.1 version, all right. So only the the you know players with that specific version will be able to connect to that specific game, all right. That build, all right. Now when you update your game, uh, be sure to change this to 0.2, for example, if you have a patch or update or something. So that way. Players with Unity, uh, players with the, the game version 0.1 will only be able to connect to the 0.1 version, not the 0.2 version. All right, so that's that, that's how it works. So basically, in, in our case, you, you can you can literally type in anything here. You don't really have to worry about points or something, right? So yeah, yeah. So you can type in uh, 10 Yasin one bros because uh, why not? 
Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's that's actually something. Yeah, that, that that's that's definitely a thing now, right? <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And now this way we're connecting. So if, if I actually go back into Unity, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna create uh, a new empty game object. So create empty. And this really doesn't have any graphic or any purpose uh, like that. But yeah, I'm gonna just uh, reset its position. So zero 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 that. And just gonna go ahead and drag and drop this script. So this this object will be, uh, uh, what you can say, responsible for all the scripts and, and whatnot, right? So all the manager scripts. Okay. So what we can say, we can call this uh, game logic, maybe, maybe control objects. I don't know, something like that, right? So now if I play, you'll see nothing is gonna happen, right? Nothing has changed. You know why? Why even bother? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but. Uh, what what's actually happened is you know you don't you don't have any errors right you don't have any logs anything at all what's actually happened in the background is that you've connected to photon server the through through your app id and your game version now how do we know that well what we can do is we can display a message or we can display some sort of a text on the screen now whenever we're connected right so what i can do is we can we can create a new variable here uh one more thing i've been using um public variables for so long uh, that I've been kind of kind of scared to jump to private variables uh, you know in my tutorials and stuff basically the thing is you should not use public variables all right I should have done that quite early but yeah so the thing about it is uh, public variables means you're exposing that variable to other scripts so other scripts can access that variable and change it right you don't need to do that okay uh, variables such as for example you know in our in our uh, other tutorials like the FPS ones, uh, we should only have public variables when you know may, may, not not even variables. We should have properties, which I haven't introduced yet. Uh, but we should only have properties if you want to change or certain functions would change the pro uh, private variables. We should not directly change them, basically, you know, because uh, that way, you know, it's you can say it's a lot more managed, a lot more composed, and uh, just just rarely use public variables. Just uh, actually don't, don't use them. Just properties, right? Just, just don't use public, that's it, all right? Say no to public variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a private variable, and I'm actually gonna use uh, something called unityengine.ui. This means that uh, all the UI-related features are now available in this script, basically. So so, so there's like text, you know, you see there's a, there's a text thingy right there, you know, it makes use of that. If I take it out, it's gonna throw them in there, so I'm gonna uh, highlight it in blue, and it's gonna throw error that this doesn't exist, right? So this is how you use UI which stuff so now you know guys be happy <laughs> and i'm just gonna name this uh control uh sorry uh connect text right so this will display uh w the current status what's happening on the screen right and now if i go back into unity and i select my game logic you can see there's nothing here because it's a private variable you cannot edit it inside of the editor right now to be able to edit it inside of the editor i just go ahead and i say serialize field all right and that way I go back and it's gonna be editable, right? So you see, there we go. We have something called connect text now, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually output our crunch status to this. So I'm gonna say connect text dot text. So I'm changing the texts text stuff, all right? Actually, before doing this, let's uh, set it up inside of the scene so it's a little bit less confusing. Again, I hope I'm not going too fast, but yeah. And I hope you can see my mouse because it's black and the UI is black and I don't know, man. I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and right click here and say uh, UI text. All right. So as you can see, this creates something called a canvas uh, event system and a text object. And if I press F to focus on it, uh, there it is, our text object. I can uh, zoom out or I can, you know, click on this 2D uh, step thingy on top here to just switch to 2D mod. So I have this text thingy right there, right? So as you can see, it comes up with a different controller. It's, it comes up with this box controller. Basically, this is uh, yet another controller. You can switch between from here. So W, E, R, and T uh, to switch between these handlers. So W for, for moving, E for rotating, R for scaling, T for moving UI-related stuff. You can also apply this to normal stuff, but you know. Let's move it to the uh, lower left corner here. And basically, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and increase the font size so it's a little more uh, noticeable. And as you can see, it has a property. So it, it has a script, as you can see, a uh, component, which says text, which is this component which we're accessing right here, right? 
and it has a property this component has a property called the text and this is exactly what we're doing here we're accessing the component text and then we're accessing its property or it's you know whatever it's function functionality which is called text and we're editing it to something like this so we can say uh text equals something you know so this, this will change this this basically right so what we can do we're, we're gonna change this to the current status current connected connection status right so we're gonna say photon network dot uh connect uh connection state detailed dot to string that means we're converting it to a string format like this so so it can actually be displayed on, on, on screen and that's it now one thing i should tell you this is not right you should not uh display this on screen you should not uh use to string in an update function especially uh or in a fixed update function you should basically just 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 don't just don't uh use to string in such functions and stuff use it when necessary for example uh, you have you have a weapon, right? Uh, and, and it has bullets. You want to show that on screen, all right? You can go in, into your update function and like say, all right, uh, bullets dot two string. So this text is uh, gonna be bullets dot two string or something, right? But that's gonna be really laggy. It's gonna be really performance intensive, CPU intensive, and you should not do that. You should only update when required. In this case, for testing purposes, I'm just doing that. So I can just say, all right, note uh, testing uh, for testing. Only, all right great let's go back and see what we have here then okay so uh now what i can do is i can go to my game logic and i can drag and drop this text object and, and it's inside of there and as you can see in my game i have this text and if i play uh as you can see it says connecting to namespace authenticating connecting to mass <laughs> uh let's it's actually cutting the text now so to avoid cutting the text we can select it and we can go to the horizontal overflow and vertical overflow and just just set it to overflow so it's like you know it's gonna it's gonna let it leak out basically so now you can say connect to name their name server and it's connected to master so it's working basically right hey yo what's up guys uh the continuation of this part will be in the second video so keep an eye out for more and see you later peace out